Kia ora tato, welcome back to another episode of Ngahere Talks. It's pretty choice this week to have a, one of the bros come back who a couple of years ago, pre-COVID and kind of pre-e-commerce booming in Aotearoa, we sat down yeah. and had a mean chat about e-commerce and the e-commerce epiphany. Um, everyone's favourite Aotearoa, Māori, e-commerce, indigenous, change-making entrepreneur, Travis O'Keefe. Kia ora hoa. Kia ora mana wa. Welcome back. I'm um, good, bro. How's it over <laughs> in um, sunny Perth? Yeah, it's nice over here, eh? It's beautiful, beautiful. It's cold. It's yeah. cold, but um, cold. yeah, it's cold, but it's, at least it's not raining like New Zealand, you know? So, but it's a desert. So it's a lovely spot. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing over in Perth? What What took you over there? She's uh, a long story, but I came over to expand our business, which is Kahal. Yep. You hear about it later on a program, and um, whilst over here, I came over in that gap in, in the um, COVID. There was a gap, New Zealand opened its borders between Aussie. Mm. I, I saw my chance, I went gapped for it, it. <laughs> like, a, like an excellent entrepreneur. I gapped it, and the only problem is, uh, then just in the shut the border, yeah. And I've been home since wow. I got locked out. Oh, wow! So that's what happened. Yeah. Perth's lucky to have you, bro. But welcome back, welcome back to the show. Just a quick, um, quick. Why don't you just do a quick introduction for those that might not have um, met you or heard about you before? Yeah, sweet. Um, kia ora everyone. I'm Travis O'Keefe. I'm Nati Konui from the East Cape of um, the North Island of New Zealand. Uh, my background is entrepreneurship. I've had 30 years in entrepreneurship, a wide range of industries, uh, a wide range of um, Skills, largely a business coach. Um, more recently, doing um, improving the lives of ten million Indigenous people via e-commerce. Um, yeah, that's a little bit of background. And if you listen to the last series, um, which is called the e-commerce epiphany, I studied twenty-four e-commerce gurus, and I noticed they had were doing similar things in their strategy, and their business plan, and their marketing tactics. I took those things, I created a business that generated seven figures, and then I shared all those hacks and tips on that last podcast series. And yeah, and yeah, a lot man. happened since we're gonna, then. We're going to unpack that a little bit more soon. But I want to just like, okay. question for you, Travis, like why e-commerce? Like why e-commerce and why e-commerce for our people? Uh, well, me personally, I've, I've got a curiosity around e-commerce. I had a curiosity. I went and I learned some stuff. I had a business entrepreneurial background. And as I went and I saw what the e-commerce guys were doing, which are largely a lot younger than me, and I was just like was so impressed with the innovative processes and approaches that they were using. And I could understand the value of them because I came from a more traditional business background. Mm. And just seeing what they were creating, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And so that took me down the rabbit hole and I became, you know, like a um, stalker. I stalked <laughs> everything, learn as much as I can. Yeah. Good. And yeah, that's why I got into it and how I went down and why for our people, um, it's an excellent way for us to overcome many of the barriers that prevent us from um, entrepreneurship and business. For mm. example, e-commerce is a lot um, lower entry point. If you compare it to, Another approach like franchising, so using Subway sandwiches um, as an example, you would pay approximately two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get a franchise license, set up the store, and so forth mm. to get start earning your own business. Versus e-commerce, you can get started probably for as low as around like you do it for free, but generally it's about five k would be a, the amount that you would need. And so that's you know, when you compare those two things, it's yeah. lower cost entry. Yeah, yeah, awesome. and, and other things, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I hundred percent agree with that. That's why we one of the core, I guess, drivers behind Corne as well, um, our e-commerce store, yeah. um, and the way that we collaborate in order to make that happen. Um, but like we were having a little chat before about how uh, e-commerce can help us, I guess, drive towards the dreams that we have for our lives, um, economic prosperity. Chucking a side hustle on yeah. making that oh, your main yeah. hustle. Yeah. 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 Well, speak to me a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean the word that 
summarises it for me is Timo Ranga Tida Tanga, which means self determination. Mm. And how I see it is um, e commerce enables you to have economic independence and freedom, which brings you the ability to choose your own path. Mm. Um, if you can earn your own revenue streams um, rather than just being a slave, sorry, employee yeah. or someone else. And, yeah. um, you know, yeah, and that's Timo Ranga Tiratanga, that's self determination. Mm. This is just economic um, self determination. So that's, I think, the word that encompasses why people should do it. Yeah, that's a beautiful way. Eh? Yeah. And we see so many people use e commerce as a great, like, a side hustle next to their full time job or part time job or working around their whanau. Um, it's just so flexible and there's so much opportunity in there to, to do things. How you want to do it, when you want to do it. Yeah. Oh. It's huge opportunity. Yeah. So many of our students have achieved amazing stuff. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Some have gone on to seven figures. You know, it's, that's and that's coming back into their family and stuff. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, mean. All right, we're going to talk about Kahal real soon, but let's do like a quick summary eh, on our, our previous podcast uh, series. It was a five episode series that we did. It's really, it's really awesome. It's like some of the most listened um, podcast episodes in in our podcast anyway. So people are cool. definitely loving it. Um, I think yeah. it would have been like 2019, maybe even, or 2020 oh, that we did know. it. Um, a while ago. It has been a while, man, but it was five parts. It was pre COVID. <laughs> 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 Who would have? We were on the money then, eh? We knew. We knew that COVID was coming <laughs> and that e commerce was going to be the thing that was going to save us. Um, yeah. It definitely drove me to kind of make a really decent play um, with what we're doing with Cornet and stuff like that as well. Cornet. But we yeah, had five amazing. episodes that went through, like, first of all, the epiphany that you had and studying these gurus yeah. went through. Um, one thing that you saw is they all had a, a really good plan. Then with their plan, they had a strategy. Then with their strategy, they had systems to make that happen. And then with those systems, they then built the right team around them. Um, but, yeah, why don't you just give us a little summary in your own words about what, I guess, what's a real goal within that series and why people should go have a listen. Yeah, I think one of the mistakes that a lot of entrepreneurs that are new into e-commerce do is they listen to someone else who tells them just build a website and people will come and you'll get rich. <laughs> and that's bullshit. If only that was, it, it was that <laughs> easy, eh? Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Did you try, did you try it, um, Travis? <laughs> <laughs> I've made many mistakes. <laughs> one. Um, I, yeah, and you, what I learned from the e-commerce gurus is you need a system. And the system is composed of three parts. Um, and the front end is traffic. Traffic means it's a fancy way of saying getting potential customers to come into your store. Mm -hmm. In the middle part, you need a store or website, um, but it needs to convert people into sales. So there's a way that you do that. And then when people leave, how do you get them to come back into your store to purchase game? And that's through an, a software app or a tool called an autoresponder. So you need those three parts mm. to the system. They all work together. Um, yeah, and that's that's a very high level view on the system. But yeah. you know, if you want to hear more, go back and listen to the episode. Yeah, definitely. We'll chuck a um, we'll chuck a link down below, or um, if you're already listening to the song I Here Talks, just scroll back a bit, and you'll find them. You'll see our beautiful faces there smiling at you. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. This. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, is it? Uh, I'm sure you were supposed to be an actor. So yeah, 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 yeah. Then I fell into entrepreneurship. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> fell in, or whatever. Um, so, <laughs> so that was a couple of years ago. So, what's been happening since then? Wow, you know, um, probably Kahal. You know, that's become my latest obsession. Mm. Kahal is an e-commerce training program um, for Indigenous by Indigenous. Uh, it's about growing disposable household incomes for people that are suffering from inequality, mm. uh, inequality in education, justice, housing, social development, wealth, wealth, health. Um, and, yeah, we teach Indigenous how to build an e-commerce system. They build the system and then they launch it uh, and then they make money. Yeah. And I've been doing that. That's, that's you know, between the gap been doing that but you know growing it we've been growing so quickly from where we were into internationals we're in 18 countries in one year Damn. so 
And so yeah, you have Indigenous people from all over the world jumping on kaha. All over the world. All right. All so how many world. students have yeah. you had through so far? <clears throat> uh, it could be a sense of scale of size. Last year we had about 2,608 apply for more information you know, to join, and of those, 260 got scholarships. Yeah. And of the 260 that's got scholarships, um, 132 e-commerce systems got launched. And of those 132 scholars, um, stores that got la- launched, they generated, I've got numbers here somewhere, they generated in 18 weeks, 644000 Five hundred ninety-eight dollars and fifty cents mean. into their community. Yeah, yeah, that's mean, bro. awesome. That's awesome. That's, that's really good for eighteen weeks. You know, yeah. so most of the training programs you're doing, you've learned the knowledge, but they wouldn't help you to build it. Mm. Yeah, and that's a big difference between us because of our social mission. We actually support you build it, launch it, and you earn money at yeah. the same time. So it's a really compressed. But in saying that, it's not a program. It's not an easy program. You need a lot of effort mm. to. You know, achieve the goal. Yeah, so 18 it's weeks, eh? So yeah. Do you have to, I mean, yeah, it sounds, 18 weeks, and you, is it like full-time? No, 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 it's part-time. So it's part-time, yeah, I can give you what it looks like. So um, we created it so that fits in with, like, your busy mum and you've got kids and that oh, work or a shift worker or something. Mm. So you could use it as, to help you with your side hustle. Um, part-time, you need about 10 hours per week to do it and the way it looks, one week what one looks, looks like you jump on your laptop you log into our learning platform which is like a website there's video content there's written content you take the lessons you apply the lessons in your business um, anything that you don't understand any jargon or concepts you write down and then you every week once a week you meet with 25 of your peers indigenous people from all around the world Mm. But it's just like you trying to achieve the same goal and meet together with a business leader that's helping you to peer group learn, so help each other up in the indigenous way. We're all helping each other. Yeah, and you meet once a week. And then on Sundays, we have a two hour session. And the first hour is a game show, so game of it. And it's where you go with your 20 group of 25 and you compete against 10 other groups of 25. Mm. and it's like a TV game show and you've got all the quiz questions and you're, you're answering them as a group. You put forward your group's answer and you get points for it. Yeah, That's yeah. the first hour, and then the last hour is um, belief changers. So a belief changer is someone who is just like you, come from humble beginnings, and through their own efforts overcome adversity, both personal and business adversities, to achieve a seven-figure e-commerce business that come from First Nations Canada, First Nations Australia, First Nations America, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, you know, all around the world to come and share their knowledge. That's one week. Yeah. Times that by 12 weeks. Yeah. So 12 weeks of that, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, um, how much does it cost? That sounds... That sounds like a main course. Yeah, it sounds expensive. So though. it's free. It's it's actually because of our social model. Our, our model is to improve the lives of ten million Indigenous people. Yeah. So what we do is we go out and raise funding from um, the government or philanthropists and who want to support Indigenous. Mm. We take that funding and we give it away as scholarships, education scholarships. Yeah. And that's that's how it's free. But free doesn't mean that you don't have to put effort into it. To get one because they're valuable. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to do some some stuff to prove that you're willing to put effort in. Oh, awesome. And so it's good for people that want to start one that they haven't started yet. Is that right? It's a range. So we have a range of people. Yes, there's some. So we had someone like Athena. Athena came on. She had no business background. She was a cultural practitioner. Um, so she does the... Um, toy kits and so she had no background and she came on and she had this product of giving away these kits for um, kids or people to learn our cultural practitioners and yeah she learned about e-commerce set it all up launched it and wow she achieved six figures mm. you know so that's an example of one student versus another student which is like Nicola Takiri who is a contemporary Maori who or clothing designer and, and jewellery and so Nicola came on she already had an existing business 
she had a website, but then she learned about the e-commerce system, built all that out, and um, you know, and then she grew to seven figures. So. Wow, that's mean. So yeah, yeah. That's just, so you got both ends. So you got both ends. Yeah. yeah. So wherever you're at in your journey, right, you can jump on. Um. Oh, what was I going to say yeah. after that? I mean, it sounds pretty mean, bro. Right? Like, is there? I you've got one coming up, right? You got a new one coming up soon, or is it already kicked off? Yeah, it's kicked off. So we're in recruiting phase right now, yeah. and we've got different indigenous nations coming along. To we do a one-hour free workshop up front mm-hmm. where they learn about the 20 secrets of 24 e-commerce gurus and then they learn about the program and then they can apply it. We didn't do this last year, but this is an important thing because it just helps people understand before they get into it mm. what's required and what they get for it and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's started and we have on average between 50 to 100 per week yeah. um, going to, to that. Indigenous from everywhere around the world. Yeah. Yeah going through and then of those a number convert into wanting to, to go for the scholarships. Yeah, awesome. That sounds real cool, man. We um so I, I heard you mention something about how you did some indigenous e commerce awards. Was that yeah, part of Kahol yeah, the, as well? Well, kind of it came from Kahol. So yeah. we noticed that a lot of as we're going through a lot of our students with you know, pouring the love and heart and effort into creating e-commerce and learning e-commerce. And then we noticed that there's no one really celebrating. You know, our mainstream media, it's easy to bag Indigenous people. Yeah. Um, and that's what happens. They pick on the 1% of us and then mm. amplify that story rather than celebrating the 99% of us that are doing good. Yeah. And so we decided we're going to do something about that and we sure. decided we'll create an Indigenous e-commerce awards. We went around with a hat up to different people and organisations that put some money in for prizes um, and we generated, I don't know, got about 130000 and we gave those away to prize holders and the sort of awards, they capture different things but um, we have a four-figure award so that's $1,000 or more you've generated by e-commerce. We have a five-figure, that's 10000 or more. We have a six-figure and we have a seven-figure and of those awesome, that got right? seven figures, yeah, Three three students have reached the seven figures. It's wow. pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Millionaires, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, I guess yeah. it's yeah, it not, not that straightforward, eh? But <laughs> no, 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 no. It's like easy to hear that, but it's not a magic bullet for people that don't want to put effort in. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you're like saying the if you do kahal, you're going to be a millionaire. Though. That's what you're saying, eh? Yeah, that no, should be your tagline. No, no I'm not. <laughs> Don't want to get sued, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty me, bro. How how are you finding it like mixing lots of indigenous peoples from around the world? Is that is that hard or is oh, that so empowering? Cool. No, nah, it's so it's empowering. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. You know, as indigenous we can relate to each other because they have had similar and worse um, mm. atrocities happened to their culture. Um, basically, they were colonised like us by the English, or you know, Dutch or French or Spanish, or okay. and um, the European powers. And several generations later, they've got similar outcomes. Mm. One, which are, we are at the bottom of most well-being statistics for most countries, mm. um, Indigenous people, and in many areas, not just one year of housing, education, and so forth. And so when you get together with the students and you're hearing their context and their stories, and you're going, ah, oh, it's just like us. You know, like you, you relate and you connect. There's so much, so many things that are the same rather than different between us. Yeah. More so than non-Indigenous in our own country. So you just create this amazing bond. And today, like some of the students in those groups, three years later, are um, catching up with each other, supporting each other still. Still. Yeah. still. That's cool. Yeah, it's amazing. I yeah. do. I I do love connecting with people from other countries too, especially indigenous people. It's just nice to have that. I don't know, different worldview, but same, like same but different, because they're obviously in a different country. It's nice to know that there's like when you travel, there's like people from there that you can hang out with, that can show you around, show you what it's really like. And then even in business, the more connections we make over the overseas, the 
the more opportunities I guess you can see, right, and see how far you can expand or what it might look like in another country. Yeah. I mean, it's been um, – I know you would have seen it, maybe it's your because of, of Kahao as well, but just the amazing growth and the amount of Māori owned businesses. Um, and especially some of these yeah. smaller like e commerce startups and stuff like that that have been coming through in the past couple of years. Um, partially through COVID and and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, what a what do you what do you reckon it is that's so attractive to our people to be doing business this way? Um I don't know. I think naturally Māori and to be Wahine Māori, uh, Māori uh, women, are more entrepreneurial than many other people. Mm. And I think that that is, comes from, you know, like, I don't know, it's, maybe it's in the genes or something. Anyway, we're great at spotting opportunities. Um, and I think that's a key driver. Like we see in Kahal, of those that are successful, 80% are wahine. Mm. So it's, it's heavily skewed towards wahine <laughs> women yeah. entrepreneurs. Hey, yeah. It's an amazing stat. And it's, yeah. that's across all indigenous nations. Yeah, that's mean. I and so, yeah, I think there's something about wahine. There's great entrepreneurs. Yeah. We can multitask, can manage manage the stress, manage the yeah. adversity, just used to it, right? Um, but I, yeah. I, I say this often, I firmly believe that indigenous women are the ones that will solve some of our big, our world's biggest challenges. There's just something about indigenous wahine. I agree. With you. That, yeah, I agree. Yeah, see things differently. Yeah, I agree. Think I agree. Differently I agree. and willing to do the work and make the sacrifices mm. that need to be made. But yeah, I mean, what a what yeah. have you been yeah. seeing? Like as far as e-commerce goes, like I I think for you, right? You you got in quite early into the drop shipping style with um, Amazon and stuff yeah, like that. What are you, yeah, like what are you seeing now? Like relevant for today, maybe for people that are in the e-commerce and want to get into it, what are some of the trends and stuff um, that you're seeing? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, a big thing is called a uh, strategy that a lot of the 24 e-commerce gurus and more are doing mm. is called omnipresent. And omnipresent means that if you create one content like this piece of content we're creating now, this podcast series, and then what they do is they repurpose it, they chop it up into make it into many different pieces of content. So they'll take one piece of content and make it into 20 pieces of content. Mm. So they'll chop small bits out of it and then use that in TikTok for TikTok shorts and then YouTube shorts. And then they'll use it for Instagram stories and then Facebook stories. It's just, it's come from one piece of content, yeah. but it's, they chop the best bits out and repurpose it. And that is really good. That's a great strategy to get people to know who you are and then to attract traffic back into your store. Mm. So that's a big thing that's going on now, particularly with um, the rise of TikTok. TikTok, Facebook's become more expensive, and TikTok has recently changed. It's always been big, right? But there's a perception for a younger generation, but that's evolving now. There's this trend that always happens with social media platforms where they evolve and they change. Mm. And one of the things that's happening now is all the older people are leaving sort of Facebook and moving into um, TikTok, and so this is normally happens this way, and then now we, the advertisers will start to come in, and that's the way. That's where it's right at right right now, mm. and therefore people have content that on Instagram, on YouTube, on um, other uh, uh, social media um, platforms are now repurposing all that content to fit TikTok. So that's that's a big big opportunity now for those that are getting into it. Yeah. Is get your space into TikTok and start creating content. And what does that look like? It's just simple education videos. Educate people. That's your key. Yeah, I mean, what about if um, you're... So that's, um, that's the big thing. What about if you're fucking out, if you're too shy to get on social media or you're just not creative? I hear that all the time. Um, like, is your business going to be all right without it? Yeah. No. <laughs> No, because I think one of the most important reasons why people buy is they're not just buying a product, mm. they're buying, you know, a relationship and a connection with you. And so in Pahal, for example, you, we get students to do that every week because they post videos up and they, they explain this is what I learned this week on their social media. And it's partly we do that so that they get comfortable with talking on camera. And it was hard for me at the start when I was talking to the cameras like so 
on. <laughs> um, Selfies. You're, you're talking about, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, yeah. Anyway, you get comfortable with it. And, and the key thing is, once you get to that level of comfort, I think you do need it in the um, business now. And you talk about your products and you educate people about your product or your service and, you know, why they should choose you over anyone else. Yeah. And then people sort of resonate with you. And it's about being authentic. I think that's one of the barriers that I've heard from our students is they they believe that they've got to be something that they're not and it's not true. You can be mm. yourself, you can swear, you better to be yourself and authentically you. That's the key because that's what people are interested in. And that attracts the right people who like you for who you are. Mm. And then that's a key reason they'll purchase your product. Awesome, bro. That's so yeah. good. I feel like people are going to get heaps of value just off this little tidbit, right? Um, but you were going to say some other things. You said one trend you're seeing is the omnipresent content. What else? TikTok matures. Yeah. So TikTok's a good place to, to now get in if you're early in whatever your niche is mm. and start building out. That, that'll be the next, you know, yeah. like sort of Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Everyone um, is saying that everywhere. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. You have to, eh? It's just like... It's not even like yeah, um, yeah. optional anymore. It's, it's an just opportunity. Like get over yeah. it and get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a big thing we're seeing with a lot of the gurus that we studied are, are knowledge is a commodity and implementation support is the goal. Mm. So they give away all their knowledge in the, in the front end and then they get paid for in, implementation support, mm. support you implementing the knowledge. And you see this example like, um, I say to our students, like, if you want to learn anything, just there's this magic box and you can, in the magic box, you can write whatever question you want and up pops the answer. <laughs> you know, how amazing is that? How amazing is that? Do you, want to, do you want to know what the magic box is? And you have yeah, to, yeah, what is and it? I say, well, starts with G, G, it'll give you a clue. It starts with G, it's called Google. Put Google, <laughs> so Uncle Google or Auntie YouTube, yeah. put in the search box, whatever question, how to, for example. And up pops the answer. So that means whatever question I've got, you can do that and the answer will appear. And then, you know, now it's about cool. Now I've got the knowledge and now I've got the answer. How do I implement it? Yeah. And that's what a lot of the gurus. So that's a big thing. Knowledge is a commodity now. Um, the other thing that's really coming present is artificial intelligence. Mm. So artificial intelligence is, is big and it is it's coming on so fast. Like, for example, ad writing, you can get, use artificial intelligence to write your ad for you. Um, you can use artificial intelligence to support your decision making. You can use artificial intelligence to go and find you potential leads mm -hmm. and customers. Like, there's just so many areas. Um, use artificial intelligence uh, to help ordering the right numbers of stock. And mm. so it calculates how many stock levels you've got, how much you've been purchased, uh, your trends over the past, how long shipping takes, how long manufacturing takes. Calculates all that and tells you you need this many units for this long in the current environment. That's like and a modern day right? super flash um, petrol light, eh? <laughs> 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 it's a try recorder, bro. It's one of Star Trek. <laughs> Star Trek. Flip the try recorder. Yeah. Mean, bro. Yeah. Any, anything else? I feel yeah. like you're on a roll. Nah, Keep oh, spilling there's, that there's, gold. There's, 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 there's lots. Uh, I guess the other thing for um, anyone that's in business is measuring the right things. Those, our students that have gone on to six figures and seven figures, what are they doing that's differently to others? They're measuring the right things. In a store, e-commerce store, you can measure 300 different things. Mm. Rather than 300, what are the top five things that you should measure and should be yeah, trying nice. to improve? Yeah. Um, so those are leads or customer acquisition costs, conversion, so that's how much you spend to acquire a customer, to get a lead, yeah. come into your store. Conversion, so once the customer's in your store, how much does it cost me to convert that person? Um, once you convert them as average order value, so how much they purchase when they're there and put in the shopping basket. Yeah. Once they get average order value, what's the profitability of my sales, so my margin. So how do I increase my margin? That's the cost of producing a product yeah. and therefore how much I sell it for and the difference in between. That's called your profit margin. And then the last thing is lifetime value of the customer, which is how many times they come back and purchase or view in one year. Yeah. And so 
great businesses want people to purchase off them more than once per year. Yeah, and so those are the key metrics out, yeah, out of sure. all of them that the, all those gurus use. Yeah. So they're highly focused on those. Yeah. And then I guess my last like little question, just to bring some tips out for the whānau that are listening, um, what's your like opinion on the best um, like e-commerce platform to use? Cornet. Uh, Definitely Cornet. No, no, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I was going for at all. I was more like Shopify, <laughs> Shopify, Wix, Squarespace. Oh, you mean, oh like. No, no, like... Shopify, Shopify, we're, we're fans of Shopify, and the reason why we're fans of Shopify is not just because they support us, but they are easy to use, they are the number one e-commerce platform globally, so um, they are so geared, they're fast, so one of the things that is important to conversion, i.e. converting someone to sale, is how fast your site really, um, mm. loads, and Shopify have lightning fast templates and it does make a big difference to conversion um, yeah they're so focused on built for small businesses whereas other platforms have other strengths but Shopify is for e-commerce mm. that's, that's the goal that's, yeah, that's our focus we, and, and what we find is with students that come on the program they have other sites and we welcome them on on other platforms with commerce um, Squarespace Wix and other things they come on mm. it's all good and then they sort of discover Shopify <coughs> how easy it is yeah. to use and then they end up converting. And yeah, how it not just has everything. We, eh? them, they just do it. They've just got everything yeah, sussed yeah, Shopify. It's is, easy. It's, yeah. well, it's intuitive. Like for example looking at your metrics many of the other stores don't pop up all your key metrics right? Mm. Your conversion percentage and all that. With Shopify you just push a button and it sucks all the data out and gives you the metrics. Yeah. Which like, date would easy. you like? Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. how about um how about social shops like Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that? <clears throat> yeah, um, the data I've seen from our students is they have small amounts of conversion there. Mm. So I don't think that's when people on social media generally they're not going to purchase shopping. Yeah, you know that's not a shopping; they're there for entertainment or connection with their friends and family. So I think it's part of the story, but that's not the way that the data is showing that it's working. Um, or where most of the sales are coming from. So, for example, our top student, predominantly 90 or maybe 85% of his revenues come from his um, Shopify store mm. versus his Facebook shop versus his Instagram shop. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. that's the sort of trend that we're seeing. It's more geared towards that. I think you use social media to position your, um, your information, to educate your audience, and to get them off there to come into your ecosystem yeah and i know yeah, i know in aotearoa anyway anyway i don't know if it's different in the states or whatever but they can't actually purchase through facebook or instagram anyway they just send you through to your store to your shopify store yeah. so you'll see the yeah. product on there so it can be good yeah. to catch attention and drive traffic across but the sale still happens the transaction still happens in, in your shopify or whatever wherever you're sending them mm -hmm. eh? But also, bro, I think there's like, I think that was a beautiful little like snack, a little like insight into what Kahal has to offer. And obviously the incredible gold mine that is your your mind and your brain and all the learning that you've done. So appreciate the korero today, bro. And um, I think if anyone's keen on reaching out for Kahal, where they go, how do they find you? Uh, the easiest way is to go to YouTube or Google and put the word indigenous e-commerce. Yep. Indigenous e-commerce, and it'll take you to our content. We're the number one globally for Indigenous e-commerce. You're such yeah. a show-off. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, man. Travis is the man. Lots of effort, eh? Yeah. Lots of effort. Yeah. That didn't come by. It was gifted to me. Yeah. He's only been doing it for 20 years. It's all good fun, I think. Don't worry. But <laughs> thanks so much, Travis. Travis is a real wealth of knowledge and a taonga for us um, in the business community. So, Big mahi to you, bro. Um, if you're in this space and you're thinking about building into e-commerce, definitely um, jump into Kahal. And then, like um, Travis said, when you're ready, come jump on Kornay as well. That'll be mean. Yeah. Kornay.com.au yeah. if you're an Aussie or Kornay.nz if you're an Aotearoa. But ngā mahi yeah. hoa, I think you got a bit of a sign-off for us, have you? Yeah, yeah. This is the Kahal. Um, this is the Kahal goodbye. So this is a running joke. And all the students now do it, eh? 
See that? That's come on, Mano. You gotta give us the kahal, good boy. It's the kahal, good boy. It's the it's so <laughs> joke. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you for joining you us, eh? Catch you next time. <laughs>